this is, I'm in the MISO area. So, and this happened, I found out this has happened a couple times after we've done some due diligence. Um, and so it's the auction clearing price debate. We've just had an auction. Um, yeah, we have a lot of zones in the MISO region. Most, most of the zones cleared at $3.40. Well, there's $3.29, 348 in that range, except for one zone, which happens to be Illinois. Uh, that's why I know about it. And it cleared at $150. A uh, three hundred percent increase, uh, and in doing due diligence with FERC, this has happened before. I think it happened in the Cleveland area a couple years ago. So, I have a couple questions. To, obviously, I'm trying to understand um, this. I mean, it's a three hundred percent increase. That's that gets your attention. It's got attention of my individual consumers. It's got my, the attention of uh, uh, the the business interests, the manufacturers who are going to be using power. Um, and so the first question is, and, and it, MISO decided to uh, have, uh, do an annual uh, auction versus some regions do uh, three years. And I want to ask Ms. Kelly and Mr. Shelk first, uh, do you think that one model uh, is better than the other uh, the MISO, in essence, MISO bet that they would have better auction results by doing it yearly. And at least in my region, they really got bit this time somehow. So can you yeah, kind of understand how I laid out the question? I think I can. Um, it requires me to go a little bit in the weeds, though, so I apologize in advance. Um, this particular market in MISO was what's known as a residual market. In other words, you do not have to obtain your capacity from that market as you do in the Eastern RTOs. As a result, the time horizon is shorter. It's just a year ahead. But um, that's a MISO decision, though. Yeah. I mean, they could have gone, they could have a three-year. They could, okay. but because most capacity is procured outside that market, it makes less sense to go out in a longer term than it would in a mandatory market as in the East. Um, the other thing to note here is one of the reasons that that result happened is because of the size of the zone that that the price was formed in. What happened was Dynagy bought a lot of assets in that region the year before, and as a result, I think they controlled over 60 percent of the generation in that zone. At one point, MISO had talked about lumping two zones together to mitigate that and make them less of a, you know, generation, what we call a pivotal supplier in that zone. That was discussed in the stakeholder process, but in the end, that did not happen. Um, one of the complaints that I've read about this alleges that one, a Dynagy employee was actually vice chair of the relevant committee in the stakeholder process that made, you know, that made that recommendation. And this gets to the point I made in my testimony about uh, threatening to leave because the generation in the southern part of Illinois, Dynagy has in the past made noises that they might take that over to PJM. So that's one of, I think, one of the reasons why that's what this complaint alleges, uh, let me just say, that that's one of the reasons why that change was not made and they were left as the dominant supplier in the zone. And sure enough, the next auction, the price spiked. So, you know, that's one of the things that gives us as consumers very strong concerns about how these market rules are set, how the zones are set, and how arbitrary and, you know, volatile the prices can be from auction to auction. John? The, uh I think the question you, yeah, I think you need to turn it on. The question you asked is a good one about the market design. We've generally favored uh, the multi-year approach in PJM and, and New England, and the reason is simply that you then get the forward price signal much earlier. So I think the Cleveland example you gave is a very good one. When the price went up in that what's called the ATSI zone in the Cleveland area a few years ago, then the next auction, uh, many, many developers came in. In fact, you're seeing development around there not only because the price went up for that one year, but because of the Utica shale gas, so there's a gas di basis differential, and these new gas plants can go in there. Um, in terms of the conduct of this auction, I think it's important to point out that MISO does this uh, rigorously in terms of overseeing the auction. There's an independent market monitor. Uh, the rules are strict about what can and can't be offered. Uh, Ms. Kelly mentioned Dynagy. They offered all the megawatts in there that they have. And as you know, what separates Illinois from the rest of MISO from southern Illinois is the competitive generators there are only dependent on the revenue from that auction and the energy market. The other point, the other states, as Ms. Kelly indicated, are outside of it. So if you actually look at the southern Illinois price compared to the northern Illinois price, they're about the same. 
because that's the only source of revenue to signal new investment. And I'll imagine if we have this conversation a year from now, particularly if MISO has a longer lead time, you'll see people come on to invest in Southern Illinois as they did in Cleveland and they're doing in New England when the price went up in New England. Last well, that's what we hope, and that's kind of the expectation of people who are saying that that's now a market signal and people will move in. Obviously, people will be hurt. Short term, th there'll be some harm. I guess the other concern I have, and there, I have so much issues that I could talk about, but is that, and which I'm not going to, so Chairman, don't worry about it, um, <laughs> is that, um, you know, that uh, there's a different world now, environmentally and generation wise, than, than that, than the Cleveland example. So bringing on and planning, uh, you're, you're only large megawatts going to be natural gas. Can't, how do you bring? You can't bring it on. You, the, the environmental regs are too stringent for us to bring on new um, Southern Illinois coal generation. And then I, on the, the end thing is, I'm really having this debate about re-regulated markets, um, just because I'm not sure with this environmental pressure that we can keep major baseload generation alive in a lot of parts of our country. A brief comment is, if you look to, to the east from Illinois, you have a good example of what if you show completely back to the old model, what the risk is there, because there you have a plant in southern Illinois where the consumers are being paid uh, stuff for billions of dollars over the multi-year life of the project, and I just read yesterday it's operating at a 10 percent capacity factor. Mm -hmm. Yet consumers are going to pay for that. Same thing happened in Ms. Castor State in Florida, the nuclear plant closed down. They're now going to be stuck with the cost of the closure of the nuclear plant. So there's always that balance between um, who's going to bear what risk and how do you compensate uh, them. And you're right, it's a conversation we're going to have to continue to have. 